Finding the volume of a sphere using a formula, lesson 13.3b. Here we have the volume of a sphere formula for your notes. The volume V of a sphere is 4 thirds pi times the cube of the radius R. That means we're going to do a 3 as an exponent for the radius. We have V is equal to 4 thirds pi R cubed. We can find the volume of a sphere and round our answer to the nearest tenth using 3.14 for pi. Here we have a sphere, and it's telling us that the radius is 2 inches. We substitute it into our formula. If we have the radius cubed, that means we're going to have 2 times 2 times 2. We can multiply these together and get an 8. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And we can multiply the 8 to the 4 thirds right away. That'll give us 32 thirds. We multiply that by the 3.14, and 32 thirds is about 10.6, and this 6 is going to repeat. We multiply them together as a decimal and a decimal, and we get approximately 33.284 inches cubed. It's in inches, so we have inches cubed, and we're rounding it to the nearest tenth, so we have 33.3. The 8 makes the 2 go up to 3, and then they drop off. So remember to use the approximation symbol when you're using 3.14. We don't need to use it when we're actually using the symbol for pi, but since it's telling us to use 3.14, we have to switch to that approximation symbol coming all the way down. Given the diameter instead of the radius, and knowing the diameter is twice the radius, one part of this would be the radius, all the way across is the diameter. We can just divide the diameter by 2. If we see that it's 8, the diameter divided by 2 is the radius. That means the radius is 4. And we can just immediately put that 4 in for the radius. We do our math, and we get 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. We can multiply that easily to the 4 thirds by writing it over 1 as a fraction. We get 256 thirds. Let's turn this into a decimal so we have them in the same format. We do 3 fits into 256, 85.33, and this 3 repeats. So I put a bar over the top. 85.3 or 0.33 times this 3.14 for pi. We multiply them together. And we get 267.9362, but to round it to the nearest tenth, we can just drop these off and get 267 and 9 tenths centimeters cubed. It's in centimeters, so we do centimeters cubed. So if we know the diameter of a sphere, now knowing that the diameter divided by 2 is equal to r, we can write the formula as volume is equal to 4 thirds pi times the diameter divided by 2 cubed, as opposed to knowing the radius and using the formula as we've seen it before with 4 thirds pi r cubed. We can rewrite the volume of a sphere formula using d divided by 2 for r as d divided by 2 cubed because we have r cubed. What we do is we cube the denominator. We don't know the value of d, so we're just going to do 2 times 2 times 2, the denominator cubed. That's going to give us an 8 for our denominator, and we whatever d is, whatever the diameter is, still needs to be cubed, so we write it as d cubed over 8. We set the numerator as d to the third power. Now we can separate this d to the third power and the 8 as, because we know when we have a variable like this, there's an invisible 1. We can say that this is 1 8 times d to the third power and separate them. We multiply the fractions, 4 thirds times 1 8. We get 4 20 fourths. We simplify the fraction down to 1 6, and notice these are just coming along. The pi and the d to the third power are just coming along. So our rewritten formula is this 
for the volume of a sphere, 1 6 pi d cubed. So if we have the diameter, we could use this as our formula to find the volume of the sphere. Using a calculator, we would use the pi key last. We can see it's telling us that the radius is 4 inches, so for the radius, we put 4 cubed. Because we're going to use the pi key last, we can move it over by the 4 thirds and put the pi at the end. We do 4 times 4 times 4, which is 64. We can write it as a fraction over 1, so we can multiply each straight across, and we get 256 thirds. On your calculator, you can divide 256 divided by 3. We're going to get approximately 85.33. The 3 will start repeating. So now notice that I switched to an approximation symbol because we're now doing a repeating 3. We can put in 85.33 pi into our calculator, hitting that pi key, and it'll give us 268.07. 268 and 7 hundredths. To round this to the nearest tenth, we would have approximately 268 and 1 tenth inches cubed. Now this answer is different than using 3.14 for pi. If you scroll back to one of the earlier examples, we got 267 and 9 tenths. That is a little bit different than when we actually used the pi key because the calculator accounts for more digits for pi than 3.14. I wanted to share one last thing with you. So looking ahead, since a hemisphere is half of a sphere, the volume of a hemisphere is half the volume of a sphere with the same radius. But that's just common sense. If we know the volume of the entire sphere, the hemisphere would be half of that. We're finished with part B. We're moving on to the last part, finding the volume of a sphere in a real world context. Knowing the answer is different if we use a calculator because it accounts for more digits of pi, it's very important to follow the instructions, if it says to use 3.14 for pi, then you need to, otherwise it'll be wrong. You've got to do it the way it's asking you, and if it doesn't, if it just wants to know the volume, then you can use the calculator and use the pi key. Have a wonderful day, and join me for that last part of the lesson. Bye.